What is up everybody? It's your boy Shazui and welcome back to another video. Thank you for joining me yet again and thank you so much for your continued support. If you are new to this channel and you are clicking on me for the very first time, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe and also turn on that post notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a video. With that being said, let's get straight into today's video. Let's go. <laughs> so I hope everybody had a good weekend. Um, as you can tell by the title of today's video, I'm going to be talking about Chris Brown and colorism. So world famous R&B singer Chris Brown earlier this year released his highly anticipated ninth studio album entitled Indigo. Now, this is a really good album. I'm enjoying it so far. It did well in the charts. It's his first number one album in like seven years and his third number one album overall. And it performed well. There's some, a lot of really great songs on it. I'm enjoying it thus far. Um, and I say thus far because there's a lot of songs on this album. They're like 30 songs, 32. So yeah, I'm about maybe halfway or so through the album, but it's good so far. It's, you know, I'm really enjoying it. It's basically what you typically expect from um, a Chris Brown album, which is a lot of club bangers, you know, um, a lot of dance songs, but also on the song, there's some really nice mellow songs too. But anyway, this is not an album review, just giving, you know, a bit of context as to where I stand on Chris Brown in general. I love Chris Brown, been a fan for years. So on this album, there is a song called Me The Stack. And this is a song which features rappers Joyner, Luca, Joyner Lucas and Lil Wayne. So Chris Brown has frequently um, collaborated with Lil Wayne before. And um, Lil Wayne has always been supportive of Chris Brown. So I'm not surprised that he hopped on this track which definitely bumps in the whip, a eh? Okay. <laughs> Why am I doing that? Anyway, um, and then there's Joyner Lucas. So Joyner Lucas is an up-and-coming rapper. He's doing pretty well, I would say. He has that really famous song, which is called um, I'm Not a Racist, where in the video you have this white dude who will be like rapping Joyner's part. So it was a really cool song too. You know, it says a lot of stuff. Anyway, um, so on the song, there is a lyric which was rapped by Chris Brown, and that is where all the controversy started. Now, let me read the lyric to you, and I'll have it displayed um, so that you guys can see it with me as well. Um, so in the song, Need a Stack, which is basically a song about sex and these guys like bragging about their sex game and what they expect if they ever like get into it with a girl. Um, Chris Brown says, only wanna fuck back, only wanna fuck black bitches with the nice hair. Yeah, that's what he said. Only wanna fuck the black bitches with the nice hair. So this is the lyric that caused the controversy. Um... And it caused an explosive reaction from people on the internet, in particular black women. And because they felt that this lyric was an attack on them, it shaded them. And that was their interpretation, by the way, of the lyric. They felt that the lyric was not uplifting of women of color. And they also felt like Chris was implying that he's only attracted to women who have more straight hair textures, which range in the one to three range. So just to give you um, a bit of a lesson on um, hair, there is a hair texture chart, which is used by women, which ranges from about one or two to four. So there's like 2A, 2B, 2C, 3A, 3B, 3C, and onwards, all the way up to 4C hair. So these hair textures, the smaller the number, so like one or two kind of hair, is hair that is a loose curl or is like straight wavy hair. So hair that would be found um, naturally on white women, Asian women, Native American women, Pacific Islander women, and most Hispanic women. So it's, so it's basically very loose curly hair or hair that is naturally wavy or straight. Um, so, so that would be those kind of hair textures. Then when you get into sort of the later three, like threes and the four hair, like four A, four B, four C kind of hair, that's hair that, uh, black women and, um, a lot of biracial women have. 
So I think you guys have heard the term 4C hair. I don't know if you've heard of it before, but that's basically what it talks about. It talks about the texture of the hair. My hair is uh, definitely in the, maybe it's 4C or 4B. I'm not sure what my hair is. This is mostly a women thing that they use. And not all women use this chart too. A lot of women don't even know that there's even a chart for hair texture. To them, hair is hair. And it really is, you know, but people like to label everything. So, um, so basically with this hair chart, um, black women who attacked Chris Brown assumed that he was saying with the lyric that he only wants to fuck black bitches with the nice hair, excuse, excuse my language, but that's what he said. They were assuming that he was saying that he only wants or is only attracted to women who have straight or like loose curly hair you know, wavy hair. So that's hair that you wouldn't find on black women because naturally black women have hair that is very curly, um, sort of coiled in. That's the hair that we have, which is beautiful, by the way. I love afros. I have afro myself. You know, I love it. But that's what they assumed. So then they linked this to colorism as well, um, which, by the way, for those of you who do not know, do not know what colorism is, Colorism is a form of discrimination and prejudice against a person based on their skin tone, not based on the color of their skin. That's racism. Colorism is your skin tone. So um, with colorism, an example, I'm a black person. And let's say I say that I only date light skinned black women, but I don't like dark skinned black women. That would be colorism. And colorism doesn't only happen within one race. A person of a different race can be colorist. So let's say you have a white man who dates black women, right? Um, if that white man were to say, I love black women, but I'm only attracted to, or like, I only like date black women who are of a certain complexion, let's say who are of a light complexion, not a dark complexion, that would be colorism. It's not racism because with racism, you're basically like discriminating the whole race. You don't care what your complexion is. You discriminate them. But with colorism, you only like certain types of um, skin tones. So that's where the whole sort of argument is. People are assuming that because Chris Bond said he only um, wants to be with black women with nice hair they assumed that nice hair refers to certain types of hair and i feel like that's where the disconnect was because as black women or as the black women that attacked chris brown i think it's very stupid and ignorant for you to and at the end of the day very insecure for you to assume that nice hair is only hair that is found on certain types of women you know women with certain kinds of hair like, why can't you, as black women, assume that your hair is nice, nice hair as well? All hair is beautiful. We all are different in our own ways, you know, um, as people in general. Of, of, you know, obviously, I'm a man. I don't really relate to this. But as commenting on what's going on, you know, it's important that we celebrate diversity. And I just feel like people were just overreacting. And as you can see by the exchange of words on the internet, you will realize that <laughs> people really did overreact on this. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to read you some of the read to you some of the comments that were said by various women on the internet. I found these from YouTube of you know women who were responding to these videos that were going in on Chris Brown, which were these videos were done by people like Impressive um, I am Aloho, um, people like Chrissy. So various people talked about this online. Um, so here are some of the comments that people said, and these comments were said by black women and, um, biracial women. Um, so women of all, um, of all skin complexions, wide range of women. So it, it wasn't just like dark, you know, um, dark skinned women of dark complexion who were saying this. It was felt by all um, women, like black and Irish women. Anyway, so some of the comments they said were, I can't support him anymore, referring to Chris Brown. I can't support him anymore for disrespecting black women. We as women need to stick together. Another person said, 
Yet black women continue to pour money into all of the celebs, making them richer and richer and richer, put these people out of business. So this person's talking about how like we, especially like as black women, are the ones who made Chris Brown's career, were the ones who are the reason why he is where he is, yet he's now disrespecting us. And um, it's true that um, the large majority, like a demographic of fans that support Chris Brown, especially when he was coming up, were black women who continue to support him to this day because he needed to tap into that, especially like R&B, you know, market, you know, and it's mostly black women that consume that. So, yeah. Um, another comment said, all hair is nice. It doesn't matter what texture it is as long as it's healthy. And the person inserted emojis, like fist pump emojis of like different colors. You know, which is true. As I said, embrace all hair. And then this person said, <laughs> oh my gosh. And then this person said, I only mess with black men who don't beat women. Damn. <laughs> so for those of you who don't get that um, comment, that insult, basically in 2009, Chris Brown, um, he uh, beat up his then girlfriend, Rihanna. So people still like blast him for that. So this person was saying, well, I only, I only, you know, fuck with black men who don't beat women. Yeah. And then there were a whole lot of other comments, you know, people went into this. There was someone who talked about, well, um, we're not going to be there when, um, no, this person said something like, I'm just going to wait until Chris Brown goes on the Yanla show and ask her to like fix his life. For those of you who don't know Ianla, she's like this really, she's the, she's um she's a very wise woman who helps people who have various problems, whether it's mental illness, who have problems within their family, who feel like they have demons within the family, or just any individuals who have any sort of like issues that they need someone help with. She is a very wise woman who helps people in anyway, go to things. So yeah. So then what made this issue blow up even more wasn't just this whole thing of colorism, but it was when um, people started to basically talk about how, you know, Chris Brown can't hide behind this whole word of preference. Because people are saying that how um, people use the word preference to um, defend um, what kind of like women or men they're into. But they were like, clearly, in this case with this lyric, Chris Brown only likes certain types of women. He doesn't like dark-skinned women in terms of dating them. And that's their assumption, by the way. This is not true. It hasn't been confirmed to be true. He didn't say that. People are just assuming at the end of the day. So a woman named Tokyo Vanity, who is on the show Love & Hip Hop, I forget which one. I think it's Atlanta. She said, LOL, y'all been you that though... She said, LOL, y'all been knew that though. LOL, it's true. My homegirl went to the club one night with her friends and the section rules was no dark-skinned girls. So you know how at the club, if you're a celebrity, you come in, you get your whole section to yourself. So this person was saying that a friend of hers went to a club where Chris Brown was at and in his section, there were no dark-skinned girls and they weren't allowed to come in. That's what they claim. And so other women actually responded to that and were saying, yeah, I heard about something like that too. Like, I know a girl of mine like went through the same thing. I find it interesting that it's, that these people, that there was no one to confirm that it happened to them. It was more of them confirming what someone else told them, but they weren't there to see it. And that's the issue with this. You have to remember that if there's really no one no first-hand witness and you're just giving second third fourth hand accounts then the validity of the story goes away i'm not saying that this didn't happen it's very possible that it happened and uh, given you know chris brown's dating history how chris brown has only dated um either light-skinned black women like rihanna or mixed race women like karushi tran um who else I guess the woman who he has a baby with, who has his daughter royalty with. Um, yeah, he seemed to only date either light-skinned black women or mixed race, you know, sort of women who have like, you know, lighter complexions or whatnot. So, so maybe it is possible that, you know, he's only like into like those kind of women, 
I don't really care what you date at the end of the day, it's your preference. But what people had an issue with is the fact that you don't have to bring other people down. Excuse me. You don't have to bring other people down to uplift another group of people. And that was basically uh, the issue that went on. So personally, how I feel about this is I support Chris Brown. I don't think I, 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 I think when he said nice, I think he was referring to I think what he was trying to say was, is that, um, you know, I, I want to be with women who take care of themselves, you know, and all that stuff. And I say it could be in any form, whether it's an afro that is properly combed. For example, this is not nice hair right now because I don't comb my hair. I don't really properly wash my hair. So that's not nice hair. But it's nice if I comb out my hair, properly air and dry it, properly put the right chemicals in to maintain the softness of it or, you know, the health, basically to keep my hair healthy. I think that's what I was trying to say. And it actually um, did say something similar to that because obviously it did keep quiet with all of this mess that was going on, he decided to respond to that. So this is what Chris Brown initially said. This is how he initially responded to the controversy. He said, and I quote, y'all tripping, tripping. Y'all bitches don't want to fuck the nigga with the fucked up teeth, do you? <laughs> Only bitches upset is the uglies, not the black queens. So that's what he said. So basically, it's kind of similar to what I just said, how um, everyone has their own preference. Like, if I date someone, I don't want the person to have bad breath. I want them to have good teeth. I want them to smell nice, dress well, that sort of thing. That's what he was trying to imply. Like, he wants to only be with women who take care of themselves and probably take care of their hair in whatever form that he is. Because he never ended up apologizing for the lyric or anything like that. Um... He, and clearly it shows because I feel like Chris Brown, as someone who has collaborated with dark skinned black people and he collaborates with them all the time, mostly men, but a, a, um, a girl, you know, he's collaborated with like dark skinned girls before and shown them much love, you know, like Ribby Ma, Brandy, Seven Streeter, loves all those women. I highly doubt that he truly feels that way. You know, maybe yes, when it comes to his own like dating, maybe he prefers to date women that looks a certain that look a certain way. You know, that's fine. I don't really care about that. What I just care is be cognizant of the words that you say, especially as someone who is a celebrity, because there are lots of people who are paying attention to what you're saying and will blast you or bring up receipts of things just to bring you down. So I think with Chris Brown, even though I, you know, I'm totally fine with what he said and I don't think he's colorist at all, you know, I support him. At the same time, I think he should have been aware that when you say stuff like that and with what's been said before in the past about how black women's hair is a nice hair it's nappy it's unkempt a lot of black women are struggling with being at work and having their own natural hair they're told to change their hair in order to be at work that sort of you know history and all those issues come into play and that's why you know, a lot of these women assumed that when he said nice hair, he was only referring to certain types of hair and not, um, you know, the, sort of my, my kinky kind of 4C hair. So, yeah, he should have been aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, nothing wrong with the lyric, but I think Chris Brown should also look at it from their perspective, why women, you know, black women felt the way they felt. Um, that's just how it is. And so he also, so with Tokyo Vanity, he also went back and forth with her and was like, you know, they were talking on like, I don't know if it was IG or Twitter or something like that. He even ended up saying to Tokyo Vanity, who by the way is a um, dark skinned black woman, he, he said to her, um, like, you know what, how about I go on a date with you? Let's go on a date. I don't know if it was Tokyo, maybe he was being serious, but I guess he was trying to prove a point. And she was like, no, thank you. I got my own man's. Bye bye. I don't need you. Um, but yeah, that was that was just funny. It's, it's just funny how the, the internet always wins. You know, this is, uh, yeah, it's crazy. So someone on, I think this was on Instagram said, so is this considered a preference or discrimination? Listen, we all have preferences. I'll give you that. Never will I discriminate against my own kind. Hashtag Chris Brown. 
And then Chris Brown responded to this person's comment by saying, weird ass angry people. Sincerely from the bottom of my balls. The bottom of my balls. I don't give a fuck about y'all negative booty. I don't, I don't give a fuck about y'all negative booty face ass bitches. I'm, I'm gonna start giving away free lace friends, which are like hair thingies, I guess. Um, for all you weird females with the skid row edges and low self-esteem. Aside from that, hop off these nuts. Half y'all look like the Budweiser frogs. So please don't come with the bullshit. Guys. <laughs> okay, let me finish. So please don't come with the bullshit. I will fire that ass up and roast the hell out you overly sensitive duckhead ass weirdos. So again... Chris emphasizes the fact that the women who are offended by this are ugly. Clearly, they're stupid. I will roast the hell out of you women for, you know, even thinking that I think the certain way. And I think Chris, Chris was in his right mind to respond that way and say what he said. Because clearly to him, he thinks all, you know, black women are beautiful. And that's clearly shown in his past. Yes, he's dated certain kinds of women. You know, he even said at one point that when he dated Rihanna, he loved her because she reminded him of his mom, not only because they have similar skin tones, but also because they had the same eye color. And I guess it was mostly a personality thing. You know, just all of that. Let people date whoever they want to date. That, that's, that's fine. I, do whatever, that's your life, who cares? The only issue is he just has to be aware and all of us have to be aware that certain things that we do or say um, can come off in certain ways. So when you respond to things and defend yourself like what Chris Brown did, also just be aware of why people are responding that way. Why are these women feeling the way that they feel? Why are they feeling a type of way? Also try to relate to them in that fashion. You know, and that's how I feel about that. And in regards to colorism as well, colorism has so much history. That could be literally a whole video on its own, but I won't get deep into that because it's, as I said, it's a loaded topic. But I do want to say that uh, with colorism, I, for example, growing up, like I never experienced it, like in Zimbabwe, and I don't really know of anyone who really experienced it either. I'm not saying there aren't any people who think coloristically, but it's just something I rarely saw. Um, however, I, my mother is a light-skinned black woman and my father is dark-skinned and my complexion is like a medium brown color. It's a, it's a mixture of that. And this is found in pretty much almost all black families throughout the world. Like there are diverse skin tones because we're just naturally all varied in our skin tones. You know what I mean? But however light or dark you are doesn't make you any more black or any less black. You know what I mean? This is science. You know, phenotypically, phenotypically in terms of your physicality and genotype in terms of your genes, the lighter your complexion doesn't mean the less black you are. And the blacker your complexion, the darker it is, doesn't mean the more black you are. Okay? This has been proven. This is still proven. So, yeah, if science comes and supports that, then you know it's like, it's real. <laughs> but no, colorism is definitely a big thing. And as I said, I'm not going to get into that. But my closing statements on this are that I support you, Chris Brown. But I just think that you should be aware of some of the words that you say. And you should be careful about how you respond to some of these things. Although I do agree with you. You know, everyone has their own preference and prefers certain physicalities when it comes to the people they date. We all have a preference and that's okay. But just be aware um, of the things, you know, that I, I keep repeating myself. But be aware of what you say. Support all women and keep emphasizing the fact that you love all of your fans, all black women. You love all of their shades, their complexions, their hair textures. Make them feel loved, especially us men, you know, because a lot of the time we're the ones who perpetuate these ideas, these oppressive ideas. So it's important that we're the ones who uplift women of color, especially black women. Black women, you're beautiful. Black women, you're loved. Black women, you are exceptional. I love you. I love black women. You're amazing. It doesn't matter what hair texture you have. It doesn't matter your size. It doesn't matter your complexion. You're beautiful. You're smart. Go freaking rule the world and do your thing. Okay? <laughs>
Uh, with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Please be sure to, um, you know, share, you know, feel free to share if you want to. Any sort of response to this video would be helpful. Um, and I will see you guys next time. I've got a really cool, deep sort of discussion coming up this week. I think I'll post a video on Friday. Um, and it's going to feature a really, really great friend of mine. It's going to be a good discussion. So keep an eye out for that. Um, but I will definitely post midweek as well. Um, so yeah, with that being said, we are clear, Shazmi gang.